Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and a brand new experiment today where we're seeing what would happen if you had the perfect team in non-league football but also based in Gibraltar. So in this experiment what we've done is created 11 perfect players who are all going to play for Slough uh, town, um, I guess is the name, but also they're all from Gibraltar. So we're going to see, I'm going to keep them trapped at Slough for as long as possible. Eventually I think I might need to release them just to add some variety to the experiment, but we'll see how we get on with that. But we'll also see if these 11 perfect players can bring them up to the Premier League and also potentially win the World Cup with Gibraltar. We'll see because they cover a lot of positions uh, how they get on, how well they perform with their average ratings uh, and how many mana matches awards they're going to get because 11 of these players in the same team is going to lead to some pretty intense competition. Now if you are enjoying the experiments on the channel this year do drop a like down below. Please do make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're one of the 70% of people watching this episode who are not subscribed to the channel. Please do subscribe, it really helps the channel grow and you get to see even more great experiments come down the line. But let me introduce you to our Gibraltarian perfect players. If we look at Slough Town's senior squad here, you'll see that they are listed up. Uh, there's enough of them here, I think, uh, to fill out a team. Um, so you've got Ka Cameron McGlip, who is a centre-back, 17-year-old. Uh, He's got a little bit of a record behind him already because, unfortunately, I couldn't find enough 16-year-olds uh, to take over. So I've reset the age of a lot of players. Ollie McCoy looks good for 17, playing left back, uh, left mid, sorry, uh, for the team. Jack McKnight, he's going to take on the right wing uh, position for Gibraltar. Um, you've also got Max Warsfold, who is the left back, but can also play in left midfield. Warren Harris can play at right wing. Uh, Josh Jackman, uh, which is a good name, he's the full back, playing on the right. Uh, Guy Hollis as well in central defence, going to be an absolute beast. Uh, and then you've got Felix Davies in goal, the world's perfect goalkeeper is going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. And Aaron Cull as well in central midfield. But there are more than just these. If we drop down to the under-23s, you can see Ada Okorogei, I think is his name, who is the perfect striker. Uh, he is the modern-day Caldo Jr., uh, for those of you who've seen the perfect player experiment. And finally, we have Drilon Krasinski, uh, who is a striker uh, playing up there, having just joined from Stevenage. I think Stevenage will regret losing him. Uh, but that is the perfect team of players. And I chose Slough because they're another one of these non-league teams that have had a little bit of a drop down when they dropped to the eighth tier and they've come back up since a couple of promotions and a steady incline I think they deserve a pretty rapid incline now to absolutely fly up the league tables so what we're going to do off the bat is jump probably five years into the future and see how they manage to get on at um, each level in English football presuming that they do just fly up the table and we'll also see how they get on with the Gibraltar national team. Well, we've gone one year ahead right now, and you can see in their very first game, it's a 7-0 win with 10 men against Stockport. They also beat Ashford United 5-0 as well with 10 men. Uh, I think maybe I left the aggression up a little bit high here, but you can see the victories keep coming in 9-0 in pre-season. And in the FA Cup second qualifying round, their first professional game, Ollie McCoy with five goals as they run out 10-0 winners. And that theme continues in the league, 6-0, getting through into the FA Cup first round. A couple of double-digit wins in the league as well. Krasinski here scoring eight goals and then scoring another five uh, just four days later. So 12 goals in four days for Drillen Krasinski, uh, or Krasnicki. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, but in the FA Cup first round, beating Ipswich 4-1. Uh, in the second round, beating Leighton Orient 7-0. Uh, and then in the FA Trophy, also getting through into the fourth round. But in the FA Cup, they lost 3-2 to Chelsea, which is a little bit inexcusable, given they've got literally the perfect team. Um, I think they've actually got all 11 of them out on the pitch here as well. So there's no excuse to lose that match against Chelsea. But despite taking 
Uh, well, going 1-0 down, they came back to take a 2-1 lead, but they threw it away in the last half an hour, an 89th minute Faustino Andering goal, giving them their first ever uh, defeat and the first ever non-victory uh, in football. So a real sucker punch for them there. First time they scored, uh, conceded two goals as well, but they bounced back with a 12-0 drubbing of Eastbourne Borough. Uh, and their run in the FA Trophy continues, getting through into the semi-final where they beat South Shields 5-0. And then in the FA Trophy final, a 4-0 victory over Notts County. You can see in the Vanarama National League South as well, they finished 40 games, 40 wins, 260 goals scored, 2 uh, against them. It's a pretty fantastic record. And when you look at uh, the team's performances here, um, I mean, Harry Lewis, the goalkeeper, is not the first choice. Uh, but you can see Oli McCoy there with 35 in 40. Um, he has got a pretty good record there, actually. This um, Let's start with Aaron Cull, actually. Here we go. Let's do it properly. So you can see Aaron Cull here, 34 goals in 40 games, 34 assists, all from central midfield. That's pretty phenomenal. Um, Akura Gyei playing up front. 50 goals, 73 in 45 in all competitions. Nearly getting a 10 average rating. Uh, you've got this guy as well. He's come out uh, 33 in 38, 41 in 49 overall. The other thing to notice, of course, I did not declare all of these players for Gibraltar. So unfortunately, Okurugye has declared for Nigeria and Krasniki has declared for Albania, and they're both strikers. Now, I actually don't mind this. Cameron McGlip as well has also declared for Scotland, but I really don't mind this because, actually, it's going to add an interesting element to whether these perfect players can carry teams like Nigeria, Albania, and Scotland to the major competitions. But also, how are Gibraltar going to do without two out-and-out strikers up front for them. Now, they do have Oli McCoy can play as a striker. They're not completely without them, but it means that they are going to have to field some normal Gibraltar players alongside eight of the greatest players of all time, or eight of the greatest players of all time. Uh, it's going to be a really interesting little twist on how they're able to do. Uh, but Krasniki as well, definitely worth checking in on him as a striker. 41 in 35, 52 in 45 overall. The goalkeeper... Felix Davies had a pretty special time as well. A 7.6 average rating, even for a perfect goalkeeper. Football managers still need to fix the goalkeeper average ratings, in my opinion. He kept 38 clean sheets. Uh, but the man of the match awards, uh, fairly evenly distributed. 7, 1. Is anybody absolutely dominating these? I can imagine that central midfielder is. Ali McCoy has got 9. But yeah, not too, and nobody actually dominating it. Nine there for Oli McCoy, I think, is the best that there is. So Oli McCoy, probably the best player uh, for them. If we have a look at their bi his biography, two winners' medals, but no National League South Player of the Year. Let's have a look at past win, no uh, records here. I think a lot of these are going to be going to Slough, and you can see them here, uh, all being listed up for Slough already. They've absolutely torn the league apart. Uh, 50 goals there, most by a player. Uh, I'm sure they've got yeah, Chris Nicky there, even getting that one for nine seconds. Um, so that's it for the first season there, up into the National League. I'll probably go a couple of years ahead this time uh, to get us up to probably League Two, and then they're probably promoted into League One as well. So let's jump forward and see how they're getting on. So in the Vanarama National League, no surprise that they started going on big wins. A 15-0 victory against Aldershot. In the mix, they're hoping for a better FA Cup run this time as well. It's a shame they weren't able to win it in their first season, but in the third round, 5 1 victory over West Brom, beating Everton 4 1, the Premier League team away from home 4 1 uh, in the fourth round. In the fifth round, Yeovil, quite friendly uh, opposition there, 5 0 uh, destruction, 3 1 against Wolves. The uh, scores are narrowing as they get further through. FA Cup quarter final against Liverpool, they've won 3 one coming from one nil down at Anfield to win three one as a Vanarama national team is pretty impressive. And then in the FA Cup semi final, a six nil victory over Leeds. And in the final, they've done it. They've beaten Manchester United five nil in the FA Cup final from a non league season. That is exceptional. I mean, it's kind of inevitable, but after last season where they went out in the third round, you never know. 5-0 victory over Manchester United. And the best thing about that is that they're going to be in the Europa League 
Well, they're also in League Two. Now, some people might remember when Millwall and other teams did make it into the Europa League or uh, UEFA Cup, as it was then, by making the uh, FA Cup final as well. It's going to be really interesting to see if they're able to win the Europa League. Because if they win the Europa League, they'll be in the Champions League while in League One. Uh, and that is something I would quite like to see. But a 5-0 victory there. They take another FA Trophy victory as well. And, of course, the Vanuama National League comes back to Slough as well. If we have a look at that league table, they finish 46 wins from 46 games, 270 goals, four conceded. Well done to these four teams for getting those goals, uh, but 138 points, absolutely slapping that title uh, like nobody's business. And then the very following season, the Community Shield is 1-5-2. Uh, even a Kylian Mbappe-inspired Man City cannot deny Slough their dominance in the Community Shield. They're also in the Carabao Cup, the Papa John's Southern Section. Uh, this is a lot of cup competitions this season, it has to be said, including their first time in league football. Uh, you can see their European debut goes 5-0 against Maccabee Haifa. Um, but they do lose a game against Plymouth on penalties. And look at that penalty shootout. Um, wow. Wow. That is a lot of penalties. I don't even know how many penalties that is. That's enormous. And they only missed one Plymouth. They deserve to go through. Uh, I don't know how Slough have lost the Papa John's trophy, uh, but they have. They also lost to Barrow in League 2. That doesn't make any sense. And they lost to Woking 1-0 in the FA Cup as well. That just doesn't make sense. I can't load the fixture up, unfortunately. Uh, but how have they lost that? They need penalties to get through against Man City in the Carabao Cup final I can only imagine they lost these games because they're at the World Cup that can be the only reason that they lost these games they didn't have their players because they're at the World Cup and you can see the winning margins as well uh, narrowing down now not all of them will be at the World Cup uh, because these two I mean Christopher Lewis is English uh, and then obviously some of them declared for other nations so it looks like they weren't playing their full team until this game here against Oldham when the players came back and they started to win games again, uh, including Chelsea 5-1 in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal. They also beat uh, Man City on penalties in the Carabao Cup uh, semi-final. And then a 4-0 win over Liverpool gives them their first Carabao Cup at Wembley, a good 4-0 win. They smashed Monaco in the Europa League second round, um, which looks like a one-legged tie to me. Uh, interesting. In the quarterfinals, they beat Milan 3-1 and then 4-1. They beat Fiorentina 2-1 and then a one all draw. It got very nervy. But in the final, a 3-0 victory over Spurs gives them the Carabao Cup, the Skybet League 2 and the Europa League all in the same season. That's not three competitions you expect to see uh, in the same victory margins. But unfortunately... They lost the most prestigious of all. They couldn't win the Papa John's Trophy. And that is going to be a real blow to them. They did also get the Community Shield as well. So that's not bad. Uh, winning four trophies in one season. But they still have an awful lot of work to do. Uh, to get that Papa John's Trophy. But you can see this nice little incline. They're also uh, changing up their facilities a little bit. So they've still got poor training and youth facilities. But uh, they will be building that up as they go. 6,000 capacity stadium now for them. Uh, I wonder if they still got the same manager as well. They have 10 years and 60 days in charge for Neil Baker. He'll be loving that. Uh, and if we have a look at their best 11, you can see how well the players are doing here for them. Um, some players not playing as much as others, but the top goal scorer at the moment is Okor Giehi, uh, who plays for Nigeria. Chris Nicky as well has 177. Uh, 132 for Aaron Cole and 123 in midfield for Jack McKnight as well. I mean, that goal-to-game record for midfield is exceptional. Even in defence, look how many goals they're getting. The full-backs getting 20 goals each in 160 games. The average rating's really up there. And other players getting to benefit as well by just being at the club. Um, but Felix Davies in goal, having a great old time um, of it after three seasons, doing a very good job as well. Uh, so the team doing very well. Now, I'm wondering whether it's worth going another couple of years ahead to see if they win the Champions League as well, or if instead we just do a little pivot and start to think about how they've done with the World Cup. And I think actually we're going to check in because we've also got Nigeria, Scotland 
and uh, another nation. Uh, or maybe he hasn't declared for the other nation. It looks like he maybe hasn't. Uh, where is it? Is it... Um, yeah, it looks like Krasnicki has declared for Gibraltar in the end. Uh, so it's only a couple of players now. Uh, Okugiehi and Maglip who are not playing for Gibraltar. So let's start off with Scotland and Maglip. Uh, they have their favourite player in Cameron Maglip. He's their key player. Uh, 17 caps now, but only one goal. Pretty good time of it generally as a player. But if we look at their senior squad schedule, has he had an impact? Now, Scotland currently in Europa League B, uh, Group 2. They lost to Serbia in the uh, European Championship playoffs, which is a shame. But they are uh, getting some results. World Cup qualifying went pretty well. Draw against France as well, away from home. Uh, and in the playoff semi-final, they beat Switzerland. But in the playoff final, they lose on penalties. Uh, McGlip did score the first penalty, but it wasn't enough. That's a real shame that they weren't able to make uh, the World Cup final, Scotland. But McGlip misses out, despite being one of the best players of all time. Now, Ada Akurigiehi. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know if I am. He has got a fantastic goal return. For Slough, look at those figures absolutely sensational, including 73 and 45. But for his country, 18 and 24 is the kind of impact you want to have. It's great that he's a striker uh, playing for Nigeria, and of course, he also has the Africa Cup of Nations as well. So, in his first season, when does he start go scoring goals for them? Uh, he hasn't scored yet 1 0, and then a 6 0, but still no goals for them. Um, he must start appearing at some point. Doesn't look like he is at the moment. He's still not playing for Nigeria at this point uh, because he's in non-league football. And there he goes. He scores there in a 3-2 win in the Africa Cup of Nations against Congo. 3-1 victory uh, and then 2-all draw. Goal in that one. They beat Togo 4-1. Uh, he scores twice in the opening four minutes. Uh, and then against... Algeria, a 3-1 win, he scores in that game. But they lose to the Ivory Coast, 2-0. The Ivory Coast, a very strong nation. Uh, and unfortunately, they aren't able to make it. But a 3-1 victory helps them through. They then have to qualify again. They are in the World Cup as well. And you can see they lose 2-1 to Mexico, 0-0 against Holland. And despite that 4-3 win where he scores the 92nd minute winner in a World Cup game to give them their only victory, uh, I think they do just drop out of the World Cup at the group stage, which is a shame. Africa Cup of Nations, again though, he scores a hat-trick here to beat Angola 3-2, 4-0 against Uganda. Beat South Africa 2-1, he scores both goals despite them being down to 10 men. Uh, and then finally against Algeria, they're knocked out in the quarter-final. He isn't able to make the breakthrough in that game. So, it's gonna be interesting World Cup qualifiers here against either Swaziland or Sao Tome and Principe, which is, uh, country I'm not familiar with um, but he's had a decent time of it and that leaves the big guns Gibraltar what an absolute rise that is in the world rankings uh, we're gonna have to have a look at this schedule uh, year by year starting with 2020 they begin with an 8-0 destruction of Liechtenstein obviously they're in the lowest European league here 5-1 against San Marino 8-1 against Liechtenstein and 1-0 against San Marino um, but then in the World Cup qualifiers, absolutely smashing everybody, including Croatia, 3-0. They also take on uh, all the other teams in the group, getting victory after victory after victory. And in the Europa League Division C, uh, getting through against Slovenia, Cyprus and Belarus with six victories. And then they warm up for the World Cup with an 11-0 victory over Kuwait, a 6-0 win over Bahrain. And then the World Cup group kicks off and it's a pretty good World Cup. They win 6-0 against Chile. 3-1 against Belgium, 3-0 against Iran. They knock England out, 3-1. Krasnicki with two goals uh, to help knock out England. They beat Spain, 5-0. But then it does take a penalty shootout to get past France. They score all four goals, Pogba and Marshall missing. And then in the final, 5-0 against Belgium in front of 68,000 fans. They become world champions in just two years what an absolute Cinderella story for Gibraltar. And if we have a look at that World Cup, uh, is it possible to see the overview? It doesn't look like it, um, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see they did manage to win the World Cup. 
I don't know why it doesn't just let keep up the uh, the records for them, but unfortunately they're not able to show that. But have they got any records? Most team goals with 27 for Gibraltar. Highest average rating goes to Krasniki as well. Um, but they've not set the record for the most goals for an individual player. Uh, so we can see that already. But we can assume that they've won the World Golden Boot as well. World Cup Golden Boot. Uh, and a 22 0 win over Liechtenstein in their European Championship qualifiers. That is outrageous. Six goals, a double hat trick for Jack McKnight in central midfield there. You know, has 38 goals in 35 games for the club. That's a pretty impressive return from him. Uh, but I think that's also where we're probably going to end this episode. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at the best 11 for Gibraltar. They don't have a record of that for whatever reason. Uh, you can see their world ranking climb here when they won the World Cup. Uh, has shot up and won World Cup uh, to their name as well. Uh, current captain is Oli McCoy, uh, who's been good out on that left wing. But they're not quite developing um, their value very much, just 7.5 million. I wonder if that's because they've got a prearranged transfer and a low wage, which have all been fixed. Um, but it looks like they're not quite taking advantage of that yet. But I think that will be the end of this episode if you enjoyed it please do drop a like down below make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new there will be another part of this experiment if you would like to see it uh, that can come out tomorrow so let me know down in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see that i haven't shown you and we'll also see if they can win the champions league but until next time see ya